I'm at a place called Venez on the east coast of England. I'm looking for an unusual pillbox. Um, so let's go and have a look for it. This nest tower, built in the 17 uh, in 1720, used the Royal Navy in the 1807, and eventually they stuck a raid on top of that, and they used it in uh, 1940 for our defences. If you go on the west coast of England, um, you don't get cliffs like this. They tend to be quite flat. Now that may or may not be through coastal erosion thousands of years ago. It's just that the east coast I think is trying to catch up. Now when the Directorate to Fortifications and Works, Section 3, or FW3, as we used to call them, these pillboxes were designed in, in, in many shapes and sizes, but they were designed mainly for two purposes. One purpose is for infantry, and the second purpose was for, for artillery. In this case, this is infantry. Now, this pillbox was built initially, and then eventually this skirting, this concrete stepped skirting was added later on. Now it looks as though the um, the loopholes were built a little bit too big. That's a guess, hence the reason why they put a plate on it. Now the problem they've got is if you've got, like for instance, a machine gun or you've got a small arms, a rifle, something like that, you've got two problems. One, if it's too big, then you could be open to enemy fire and there's bullets could go inside and ricochet around and kill you and the other people. And secondly, if it's too small, then you've got, it's more secure, but you've got less visual range of fire so it's six one half dozen of the other now some of these pillbox in order to disguise them especially on the front like this is used to put uh, a false roof on it now whether that's got a false roof on them i don't know i think the reason why this skirts on here is because um it's obviously going to try and defend any land attack or i should say um seaborne attack by landing troops around this area. Uh, the sea is only probably two or three hundred metres away, which is four or five hundred feet, roughly, something like that. And um, this obviously couldn't defend itself against um, tanks or anything like that, so it's got to be a defence against real infantrymen or possibly uh, paratroopers, because I wouldn't be surprised that this area may have been a zone where they were put uh, paratroopers behind our lines. The cliff face is probably a good 100 metres high, which is about 300 feet. So um, that is my uh, assumption. A bit of information, I think the Royal Scots Fusiliers used to man this post. Um, so it says on um, some information I've got. The uh, anti-blast wall, or anti-ricochet wall, sorry. Uh, it's a bit muddy to be honest with you. But it's very similar to the Type 22. Um, oh, pillbox. Show the other side. Apparently there used to be quite a lot of defensive structures around here and on the east coast of England. A lot of them been taken away by the uh, local councils and that just to probably reclaim the land. Uh, and I think it was if some of these bunkers were on farmers' lands, they were paid something like five pound to get dispose of them. Now five pound back in the 40s is equal to about 250 pound these days or maybe 300 euros, something like that. Um, a lot of these places around here, they were fell into the sea. The cliff edge is so dangerous. And uh, they'll just basically, as time uh, wears away, they'll just topple in the sea. If you go over to Europe, you'll see exactly the same with the uh, German fortifications as well. They'll just roll off into the uh, sand and then eventually the weight will take them down below the, uh, the sand itself. And exactly the same for us over in the uh, United Kingdom. 
especially this east coast.